Hey guys, Biscuit here uh, with another review of the high grade Universal Sentry RX 78 3 Gundam plus MS 09 RS Char's Custom Rick Dom. And I gotta say, just right off the bat, I just want to take a look at this box art, bring your attention to it. This is such an amazing box art. I don't think I've seen a box art this great on a model from Bandai ever, really. Uh, you've got nice CG images of both of the models you're going to get in this set, uh, mid-duel, with close-ups of both of their heads and their pilot name and model number. Um, so going back to the actual models, uh, this is part one of two reviews. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at the uh, Rick Dom, Char's Rick Dom, uh, and in another video we're going to be taking a look at the RX-78-3. So let's jump straight on into the aesthetics of this model kit. Um, first of all, let's talk about the color of the model kit. Um, I don't entirely know when the original High Grade Universal Century Rick Dom came out, but I'm assuming a little bit uh, before um, the RX-78-2, and, well, of course, um, it, it also probably came out before uh, Bandai started, you know, really getting good with their color separation, because there's some stuff on here that isn't exactly the greatest in terms of color separation, but I'm not too mad because the G3 Gundam is worse and I had to paint on a lot of the missing details because man did it annoy me, but this guy is pretty good for uh, color accuracy. As for the actual colors we get, we have Char's typical salmony pink all over uh, the model. We also have a very nice bright almost signal red for the head, and we also are going to need red painted in quite a few areas on the model kit itself. First of all, there are several thrusters located all over the Rickdom, and these aren't supposed to be in brown, these are actually supposed to be in gray, so you're going to have to paint that. And the inside is also supposed to be red. Same with the bottom of the feet, they're going to have to be a brown. But I'm not complaining um, because that uh, you won't be seeing the bottom of the feet. You're not going to split with the bottom of the feet, are you? <laughs> um, and overall, the color accuracy could be a little bit better, but I'm not going to be mad about it. As for stickers we get with the model, um, we have pink for sights on... The weapons, I will mention uh, that white decal in there, that is one that I custom put on, as well as most of these others, I'll get into that a little later. But we have pink for this for the sights on both of the weapons, uh, behind the clear piece, which is very nice. And we also have pink for the mono eye and the head. We also have uh, a sticker right here on the crotch section, um, and we have two red ones right here. And for the scattering beam gun, that's also a sticker in yellow. And that's all the stickers we get for this guy, which I gotta say, I'm really happy about him being this color accurate. Um, really the only one you would super need to put on would just be the eye and the sights, um, or you could paint them yourself. I personally didn't want to paint it, um, just because I don't exactly know how to hand paint all that well. But that's besides the point. Um, let's jump straight into some size comparisons. So here is Char's custom Rick Dom next to a 1144 scale core Gundam, a 144 scale real grade crossbone Gundam, um, next to the 1144 scale Destiny Gundam, and next to the 1144 scale Banshee Norn. And, of course, next to the G3 Gundam. So, as you can see, it's fairly average size. Maybe even a little bit small, if that. Um, but I'm not complaining about the size. It's just big enough. So, let's talk about what you're actually going to be getting with this model kit. First of all, uh, the weapon that's already equipped on him. The, uh, the, baz the giant bazooka. Um, this is a huge... Thing of a weapon. Let me pop it off really quick just so you can see uh, 
how big it is. That, move out of the way you. That's it compared to the size of my hand. And keep in mind, it is fully outstretched. Um, and it's literally the size of it. This thing is huge um, and can be a little bit too much for the thing to handle. I'll get more into that uh, during the articulation segment. Um, but for now, uh, in order to equip this, you put it inside of the trigger finger hand and that pops on to the model just like so. And it holds it fairly well without any extra work. Um, but if you take the time to put in some super glue on the joints, um, more specifically the hands and the elbow joint, then this thing will have absolutely no trouble holding it up whatsoever. And that is an awesome weapon. So as for uh, the other firearm that this thing comes with, uh, here is the giant bazooka. Um, but which one of these is really the giant bazooka, huh? And this thing, as well as that, uh, other bazooka have a movable handle uh, to adjust the angle, and this one has a little bit of a, I don't know what you would call that, um, but it can move, um, it's connected on a hinge joint, very loose I might add, you might want to tighten that up. Um, that's all for this weapon, and for the last weapon, we have the Heat Saber. Um, this, this comes in a very nice um, yellow, it, it almost feels like, it almost looks like it glows, um, under some lighting, that's definitely not true, but it looks really great, and there's actually a place to store it on, uh, this guy, F coming to the back, um, there's a little spot right here where you can easily put, oh, yeah, it's something I should probably mention, uh, be very careful with the heat saber, as to not accidentally break it, um, I don't know what happened with it, uh, I think the, I'm pretty sure before this had snapped, uh, the connection was really tight. Um, of course this isn't supposed to come out, but do be careful with it if you're planning to have a pose with it, as this can easily break. Unfortunately that happened to mine, but a bit of super glue will help it stay in place. So, let's talk about the hands. As for hands, you get the trigger finger hand, um, two fists, one is already on there, and a very nice widespread open hand. This makes any pose, it'll just make any pose that much more dynamic with this hand attached. So let's talk about the articulation uh, from the head down. First of all, the, and I'm just gonna say right before I get into it, this thing blew my mind. Um, for its level of articulation, because let's face it, this is one very, very chunky mobile suit, and for a high-grade Universal Sentry, I am very surprised with the amount of articulation you get with this guy. So, starting with the head, you actually have a slight side-to-side -side movement. You also have upwards movement, which reveals some internal detail. You can't see it on camera because it won't pick it up, but I'm sure if you were to paint that, it would stand out a lot. And the mono eye is actually on a ball joint, uh, so you can move it up really far and down and side to side. Uh, something I will mention uh, is you have so there's actually supposed to be a clear piece um, right in front of the mono eye, and in case you have that in, you could easily detach uh, this part of the face and move the mono eye around in there like so. Uh, the problem with that is I don't, it's a little hard to see where the mono eye is gonna end up looking, so I tend to leave the clear piece out. Also, I don't, exactly agree with a clear piece on a uh, model on my at least my rickdoms anything like a zaku i'm fine with but a rickdom i don't know about that so coming to the waist you actually have a slight bit of a swivel uh and a bit of some upwards movement uh this is due to a polycap being in there uh connected with a hinge uh so that's actually really nice um you have the shoulders that are on butterfly joints, so they can move in and out. Uh, the shoulders are attached separately, so they can uh, swivel around, uh, because you actually 
feed in the shoulder first onto the peg before you put on the shoulder. So you get a full swivel uh, below the shoulder, um, a nice 90 degree bend, very nice, um, and a ball joint in the hand that can wiggle around, swivel, and do everything a ball joint does. I will mention the poly cap in here can actually be moved upwards if you were to disassemble the arm. I'm not because it's made up of a ton of pieces and I'm not about to do that. Uh oh. Uh, the hands. So these hands are not exactly the greatest. They're attached by a peg going into the a thumb and the rest of the fingers are one peg going into the fingers onto the hand. These for some reason just aren't the most solid and as a result I bit the bullet and just glued the hand onto this weapon here. It's something you're going to want to look out for. A bit of super glue uh, to the joint will help. Um, just be very careful with them as they are very loose. So coming down to the legs, you have uh, the legs attached by a ball and socket. Um, and I will mention the peg is actually really far out. So you get a little, oh, if I can get this back on. There we go. You get a very nice swivel um, from out to in uh, with this ball and socket, which I don't find with many higher universal sentries to be the greatest, but with the design of the rectum, it kind of uh, allowed for that, which is pretty cool. The front skirts are actually molded individual, individually on the runners, so leg can move up that far. Uh, if you bend, um, if you bend the knee. Uh, and make it go over, you can get it a bit higher. Uh, these, I don't know if these will get in the way, but these verniers in the back skirt can move separately, uh, and it, the leg can move back really far. And as for the splits, it it's pretty decent. Um, these side skirts are also on a hinge joint, but then again, it's not really put much to use. As for the knee, it's double jointed, but you do get only a 90 degree bend. Um, I'm not upset about this at all. This is a very chunky leg, and I I was not expecting something as good as a 90 degree bend from this leg. And getting down to the feet, this is where things start to get a little bit weird. So you have a hinge connected to a ball joint, and well, you can hyperextend it to make the foot go all the way out here, uh, which is a little bit, actually it's a lot more than necessary. And ugh, the inside of these do not look great. I, oh, yeah, these, you, you, you might not want to display the foot right there, not only because it looks kind of wonky, but because the inside of the leg does not look very good. So that is it for the review of the MS-09RS Char's Custom Rictum from the High Grade Universal Century RX-78 Gundam plus MS-09 Char's Rictum set. Uh, this is a very solid kit. Um, and if you were thinking about picking up the standard uh, Rictum, High Grade Universal Century Rictum, I would totally recommend it. The accessories you get with this kit are very nice. Articulation is way more than expected. Uh, sure, there are a few problems here and there um, with loose joints and the loose hands, but I can forgive that uh, just because they're super easy to fix with a bit of super glue thickening up that joint. Um, thank you for watching and stay tuned for part two of the uh, set where we'll be taking a look at the RX-78-3.